Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, let us discuss about the structure of the prokaryotic gene as well as the structure of RNA polymerase. So if you see this diagram, this is known as prokaryotic gene and this prokaryotic gene consists of regulator gene, promoter sequence and operator start site and all of these are called as gene A, gene B, gene C, all of these are called as structural genes and this together is called as operon. So let us learn each of them, I mean each of the function of them, okay. Normally in genome initiation sites are present at between the genes and the sequence which is present after the promoter region is called as downstream downstream sequence after this after this start site I mean whereas this start site is also called as ori site ori site is nothing but origin site whereas this start site is also called as initiation site I mean why it is called as initiation site because the process I mean the process of transcription begins from this site only hence it is called as initiation site where the initiation stage occurs from this start site hence it is called as initiation site site also or site is nothing but the origin site where the origin of the you know process takes place here and these all of these are known as structural genes and next RNA polymerase is an enzyme which will bind it over to this promoter sequence. I mean this promoter sequence if you zoom that promoter sequence if you see here to know more about the promoter sequence uh, it has a core element which controls the expression of the gene I mean and normally this promoter sequence it uh, this minus 10 and this minus 35 are the number of uh, you know it is a number which indicates the, the type of uh, number of nucleotides I mean and if you see here this upstream will be denoted with minus and downstream will be denoted with plus so here the number of nucleotide for here he will be plus 10 plus 35 and like that here so it is denoted with minus hence we can denote here with minus 10 minus 35 like this as it is present in the upstream region where the promoter which is present at the upstream region hence the number of nucleotide here is minus 10 and here the number of the nucleotide is 35 and in the minus 10 region, uh, the sequence which is present is T A T A A T. That's nothing but thymine, adenine, thymine, adenine, adenine, thymine. This 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 is a sequence which you can see in the minus 10 region. Whereas coming to the in the minus 35, uh, thymine, thymine, guanine. Adenine, cytosine, adenine. So this is the sequence. I mean T T G A C A. This is the sequence which is present at the minus 35 region. So here, if you see here, uh, Tata box is nothing but T A T A. Here, the first four letters you have to take, which you have to consider it as a Tata box, because. So if you see here, the starter sequences always differs within the organism. That's nothing but uh, if you if you take in the case of E. coli, I mean uh, if you take in the case of prokaryotes and eukaryotes, the starter sequence will be totally different. I mean it varies within the organisms. Okay, and this is the Tata box. Tata box is nothing but thymine, adenine, thymine, adenine, T A T A Tata box. And coming to the type of the Tata box, there are four types of Tata box. They are T A T A A A and T A T A T T. T A T A A T and T A T A T A. So if you see here properly, the last two nucleotides changes here. I mean, e in each of the type of nucleotides, sorry, in each type of Tata box, there is a change in the last two nucleotides only. That's nothing but here adenine, adenine is present. Here thymine, thymine present. Here adenine, thymine is present, and thymine, adenine is present here. So here I have took uh, the third one, A T. I mean here A T. So you have to consider only first one, which is called as Tata box okay and normally the bond which is present between AT I mean adenine and thymine is double bond but it can break easily because it is very weak but whereas if you see in the case of G and C uh, the bond which is present is tightly because triple bonds are present here and if you want to break this triple bond then there will be a requiring requiring of some energy so when you apply some energy on this then only uh, you know this the bond which is present between G and C can break okay so now so this will be the zoom region of the Tata box. I mean at the minus 10 region here which I have said you at the minus 10 region. This will be the zoom region and here I have said you that RNA polymerase is an enzyme which will get binded over to the promoter sequence. I mean here if you if I said you begin, beginning only I have said you that the RNA polymerase is an enzyme which will get binded over to the promoter region right and in that promoter region it will get binded to the Tata box. So when it gets binded to the Tata box then what happens is that it releases some signal and that signal is called as transcriptional factor 1 TF1 so what is the main function of this transcriptional factor 1 uh, you know signal so what is the main function of that signal is that it mainly helps in unwinding of double stranded DNA so as if you see here this will be the first strand and this will be the second strand so two strands that's nothing but double stranded DNA so this transcriptional factor will unwind the two strands in such a way that if you see here this is a ta 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 right and if you see in the complement strand if you see here this uh, what is the complement nucleated of thymine adenine is a, th uh, a complement nucleated right whereas if you see in the case of adenine the complement nucleated is thymine for thymine again adenine and for again and again thymine is a 
complement nucleated area. So this is a complemented uh, strand and this is a normal strand. So the normal template strand I mean where template strand will also be called as sense strand and this is anti sense strand which is called as you know complemented strand. So these two strands uh, we get together to form a double stranded DNA right. So when the RNA polymerase will get binded over here then what happens is that immediately there is a releasing of the factor called as transcriptional factor 1. So this transcriptional factor 1 will mainly helps in unwinding of the double stranded DNA. So that's something but like this it forms a bulge like structure and that bulge like structure is called as transcription bubble. So it is like a bubble like structure right this is bubble is known as transcription bubble. So when this transcriptional factor 1 will get uh, you know <coughs> will, will form the unwinding of this double stranded DNA then immediately a layer called RNA will be formed and that RNA will be formed as in the form of mRNA, tRNA or rRNA okay so in this way the RNA will be formed from this you know prokaryotic gene of the promoter region in this way this uh, you know this RNA polymerase plays a major role and here here also the RNA polymers will get attached okay because without RNA polymerase there will be no functioning of uh, you know there will be no synthesizing of RNA so in this way uh, the prokaryotic gene structure can be explained so now this gene A, gene B and gene C which are called as structural genes what, what does the main function is that this gene A and gene B and gene C undergoes transcription when it undergoes transcription what happens is that protein A, protein B, protein C will be formed so here what transcription process is nothing but which consists of three stages that's nothing but initiation, elongation and termination so when how the initiation occurs which I have said to you that at the start site region that's nothing but which is present at the middle of the uh, middle of the prokaryotic gene right so this will be the start site so the start site is present at the middle region of the prokaryotic gene so this start site from the start site only the uh, you know the process of this initiation occurs hence it is called as initiation site and in this initiation what happens is that the RNA polymer will get binded over to that uh, promoter sequence that's nothing but the data box then what happens and then the RNA synthesis occurs at the last one I mean at the uh, termination region at the termination state so then what happens is that this uh, this is a bulge like structure which I have said you that this is known as transcription bubble right this transcription bubbles will be passed towards the downstream region I mean it moves forward to the downstream region for example I have said you at the promoter region the bulge you know this transcription bubble will occur so when the transcription bubble occur then immediately one unit of RNA will be formed which I have said you here at the one unit of RNA will be formed for example if you take this is one unit of RNA so uh, when it will be formed when the transcription bubble is formed at the promoter sequence I mean at the Tata box so when that uh, bubble will be moved towards forward direction I mean towards the downstream direction then the RNA synthesis occurs I mean then the more amount of RNA two units three units and four units amount of RNA will occur so uh, when it occurs when the when this you know when this transcription bubbles will move towards the forward direction then the RNA synthesis will also be increased so this is the one of the important thing which you have to remember coming to the structure of RNA polymerase Audrey Stevens and Gerard Hurwitz are the scientists who gave the proper structure of the RNA polymerase in, in the year of 1960 and coming to the another scientist Roger D. Kornberg is a scientist who gave the detailed images of the RNA polymerase I mean digital images of RNA polymerase in the year of 2005 and coming to the year of 2006 he was awarded with the Nobel Prize he was awarded with the Nobel Prize. So coming to the structure of RNA polymerase which was given by the order Stevens as well as the Hurwitz. So RNA polymerase is an enzyme which synthesizes RNA from the DNA template which I have said you in the prokaryotic gene itself. So what I have said you in the prokaryotic gene, the double stranded, this will be the double stranded DNA. I mean this will be the one strand and this will be the another strand. So this is the double stranded DNA right and that RNA polymerase will get binded over to here in such a way that it mainly helps in the formation of RNA. So there is of RNA which I have said you in the prokaryotic gene previous itself. That's what given here. RNA polymerase is an enzyme which synthesizes RNA from a DNA template. So if you see this is the structure of the RNA polymerase. This is a proper structure of the RNA polymerase. So if you see here. It consists of two alpha subunits, two beta subunits, one omega subunit. And here this is not a subunit. This is a factor, rho factor. We will call it as a factor. And normally uh, the RNA polymerase doesn't consist of this rho factor. It, this, it doesn't consist of rho factor. So this, is, this will be the only the structure of the RNA polymerase. So why I consider this a rho factor here? Because without rho factor, this RNA polymerase is in inactive form. Is inactive in form. So why it is in inactive form? Because uh, without rho factor it cannot get it can bind it over to the prokaryotic gene but the synthesis of RNA doesn't occurs but when this uh, rho factor will get attached towards this RNA polymerase and this total structure when it gets attached towards the promoter sequence of the prokaryotic gene then what happens then only the synthesis of RNA occurs so that's the main function of this rho factor this rho factor plays a major role in the synthesis of RNA when it gets attached to the RNA polymerase enzyme 
okay and this beta subunit is are the, are the largest subunit which is present in this total rna polymerase structure and next coming to the alpha subunits this alpha subunits are called as core enzymatic subunits and beta subunits are uh, the are called as catalytic center or catalytic site and this uh, beta subunit consists of rudder domain which mainly helps in the stabilizing dna and rna hybrids and normally if you see in the structure of the rna polymerase it consists of carbonyl terminal region it consists of carbonyl terminal region so what is the main function of that carbonyl terminal region is that it mainly helps in the attachment of this rna polymerase this carbonyl terminal region will mainly helps in the attachment of this rna polymerase to the promoter sequence which i have said you in the previous only so this will be the promoter sequence right so this rna polymerase will get binded over to this promoter promoter sequence so how it get promote how it get attached towards this promoter sequence is nothing but with the help of this carbonyl terminal region so this carbonyl terminal region will makes the rna polymerase to get attached towards the promoter sequence okay it will get interacted with the promoter region i mean the promoter sequence which is present in the prokaryotic gene okay so normally you have to know about this three that's nothing but rna dependent rna polymerase rna dependent sorry dna dependent rna polymerase rna dependent rna polymerase and template independent rna polymerase so what are these three so if you see here when the synthesis of rna occurs from the dna then the enzyme which will be required is dna dependent rna polymerase listen to my sentences properly when the synthesis of rna occurs from the dna okay when the synthesis of rna occurs from the dna then the enzyme which will be required is known as dna dependent rna polymerase okay so when the rna synthesis occurs from the rna itself again from the rna then the enzyme which is required here is known as rna dna rna dependent rna polymerase and this both comes under the classification of template dependent rna polymerase so coming to the template independent rna polymerase here it occurs in the absence of template molecule you know as as we know that the dna strand consists of two strands i mean the, the template strand as well as the complement strand right and this uh, t this uh, this enzyme is mainly used when there is the absence of template molecule so when there is the absence of template molecule even though the synthesis of rna occurs how it occurs because of the presence of this enzyme known as template independent rna polymerase enzyme so the best example of this template independent rna polymerase enzyme is known as poly a polymerase so this is about the structure of rna polymerase so hope you would understood this video and if you like this video just subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates and if you want to share your friends this video you, the link will be given in the description box you can share it so thank you for watching this video